Hey guys, what is up? It's Melanie and welcome to today's video. It feels like it's been so so long since I've sat down with the camera and had a talking video and I feel like all talking videos start off with that little disclaimer, but it really feels like it. I've been hinting at this video for a little while now and I feel like I have all my thoughts collected and so I'm just really excited to share with you guys now that I have officially been graduated for a little over a month. Everything that I learned in college and everything I would tell my freshman self. You guys know I'm a big journaling girly, a big reflection girly, and graduating from college is a huge milestone that's been my life for the past four years. So uh, no better way to close off that chapter of my life than to do a little reflection and summarize some things that hopefully can help some of you guys, some things that I've just learned from the past four years. So I have my handy dandy little notes that I'll be referencing for this. For this video, I decided to separate it into four sections. So firstly, I have my academic advice, then I have more general advice. I also have some little social bullet points. And then lastly, I have private university or university specific advice. If you're new here or didn't know, I went to Pepperdine, which is a very small Christian private university in California. So some of this advice, things that I gathered from my college experience are going to be very different from someone who went to a public school in the East Coast. Every college is just really, really different. Take everything I say and have learned with a grain of salt. So let's dive right into this. We're going to start off with the academic advice. My biggest thing is planning your classes starting freshman year. I feel like it's really difficult because you go from high school where your hand is being held like the whole time, but college is really different. Yes, you can have an academic advisor and I know it's a little more hands-on if you go to a smaller or private school, but at the same time, you have a lot of control. You can choose what types of classes you want to take. You can choose what you want to study. You can make your schedule in a way that caters to you if you learn better in the morning or the afternoon or the evening or if you want to block your schedule and have all your classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays and have the other days off. You know, you just have to find what works for you and of course you're not going to know that your freshman year so it's all trial and error and I know especially at a lot of public schools when it's harder to get the classes you want because you're an incoming student then you don't have a lot of say in this but that is one of the the perks of going to a private university or if you go into college with credits either from APs or transferring credits over there are a lot of perks with that personally I transferred a lot of community college courses over so I was always very lucky with choosing my classes when I say this point from my personal experience I made like my four-year plan but I did not connect how important this plan was like how this is literally what I will be studying for the next four years which I know sounds really stupid but sometimes when you're a freshman you're just in a different mindset like freshman me was like I want to have my college experience I'm gonna love it here I'm gonna want to stay here forever and by the time I was a junior and I suddenly had this realization that like wow I don't have that many classes I can graduate like early my mindset had a huge shift I was like no duh I'm gonna graduate early I can save a whole you know like I can save so much on tuition it wasn't even a question so you just have a different thought process as you age up through the years and after you have some time in college but that being said from my perspective of realizing I was able to graduate early I wish I knew that a lot earlier on and like it processed to me I just could have laid out my class schedules a lot better I just wish I looked at my class schedule plan and someone like explained that to me a little better because I definitely didn't have a grasp of that my next tip is to always make a class friend on the first Day. I know it's hard to just say like make a friend but I feel like in a classroom environment everyone wants someone to talk to not just to have more friends but it's super helpful in an academic setting if you're sick or if you just don't understand something to be able to shoot someone a text and be like hey did you get this hey you know when is our test hey do you remember what professor said about xyz like it's so so helpful and also just having study groups or making connections in class makes class so much more enjoyable next i said always always 
always use rate my professor i know everyone chooses it based on different things whether it's the topic or the professor or how it fits in your schedule and sometimes you have like no say if it's the only class that's open but my tier list i guess is based on the requirement of the class first like if i need it for credit or if the topic is interesting to me then the professor i think having a good professor makes the world of a difference and personally i would choose having a professor who i've heard good things about or you know who i I personally like maybe I've taken them before I would rather have a good professor who carries a good course than have a good classroom of friends and a terrible professor having a terrible professor is just awful it's the worst after that then I do whatever fits into my schedule personally I like to semi block my classes like I don't like having a bunch of time in between my classes and then last fourth on the list is friends I think you know I mentioned a whole bullet point on how helpful it is to have friends in class but also I don't really recommend planning your class schedule or your major or anything like that around friends i think you'll just probably regret it later next i said learn how to take class specific notes this was something that was kind of hard for me in school because i am like a cutesy note taking girly so i went from like paper notebooks with all my muji pens and i got an ipad and then i was an ipad girly but there's some classes that you just don't need an ipad for if that makes sense like there's some classes where i need to type i know that people have their opinions on like like, oh typing you're just copying it verbatim you're not processing it and yes I do think the type of notes you take should be specific to how you learn in your learning style but I also think they should adjust to whatever class you're in for example if I'm in a math class I only have my iPad because I'm writing down problems I'm working them out in my head but if I'm in a lecture class and I need to write everything down quickly then I will be just typing Google Docs or something and sharing it with friends so that we can get as much information as possible and while it does kind of suck to have my my notes scattered everywhere I think it helps a lot in the long run to have the type of notes you need when you need them next make a semester or quarter long checklist like on Excel I used to think this was a little excessive and just like pretty and color graded and stuff and I am very type a so I enjoy doing those things but honestly it saved me so many times and it just gives you a lot of clarity with your semester when you can see how far along you are or what assignments are coming up next because it sucks to realize you have a really big assignment and you haven't started it until they mention it again in class. I think it's really important to have some kind of list of all of your assignments for the entire semester and all of your classes in one place. It'll help you so so much. Also pay attention to the weight of the assignment. If you have a test and like say the professor and the class and the environment hypes it up to feel like it's a really big test but it's only worth like 10% of your grade compared to another test that's worth like 30% you need to be very self-aware of what you actually need to study for and I know it sounds like kind of obvious study for whatever's worth more but I think in the moment especially during like midterms or final season it's really easy to just like focus on what you want to focus on like what's easiest to study for or what you're good at but you just need to know your strengths and weaknesses you need to know like where your time is worth the most okay I did write write this down this is a little embarrassing but I'm also really guilty of trying to multitask and in college your professors some will it depends who but they probably aren't gonna like call on you and tell you to stop like online shopping but I promise you if you actually listen during class if you actually do the readings like you will gain a lot more from your college experience lastly for my academic section I personally found a lot of my academic motivation from who I was surrounded with like yes I think a lot of it is your nature and how you are in school but I also think if you surround yourself with people from your classes or people who are also having the same academic goals as you, it will help a lot. So whether that means you're in a club professional fraternity or you just make friends who are very studious, I think it will affect how you study and learn and apply yourself in school so much. And if you don't have friends who are on the same level as you and you still have that discipline, I also definitely recommend watching like study videos on YouTube. I think that helps a lot okay we are now on to our general advice firstly take advantage of the perks of being a student this applies to student discounts don't buy anything guys anything unless you ask if there's a student discount I'm talking shoes online clothing shopping restaurants especially restaurants local to your college campus a lot of them will just give you like 10 15 percent off I didn't realize Alfred's coffee gave a discount for Pepperdine students until like a month before I left and I was devastated 
Anyways, also counting for like career advice, networking or informational interviews, people are way more excited to help a student studying business or sophomore than they are to help like some person who's just unemployed. A lot of weight comes with the title of being a student and you are paying for that title for the time being while you're in college. So don't waste it. Next, save money. Do not buy your textbooks for the first day of class. I know it always, always, always says to do it on the syllabus, but there is no class. You're going to start going into it on the first day. And honestly, if they do, just be like, I ordered it. It's on the way. From personal experience, I have never, ever, ever had an issue with this. And I think the only textbooks I bought in college, which suck because textbooks are freaking expensive. It's a whole industry. The only ones I've ever bought are for like language classes where you need a code or like a connecting homework website. Do not buy it on the first day. Ask around from people who have taken the class before, the people sitting next to you in class. Look for online PDFs. Ask the professor if you can use an older edition. A lot of times the older versions of the textbook will be free but the most current one that they recommend you need for class will cost a hundred dollars but the chances are like every time they revise a textbook they're not very different like you can definitely still use it for class most of the time maybe i'm just being cheap but i think paying for textbooks is awful another option is splitting a textbook with friends sharing the pdf or a lot of times people are just really willing to share it with the class if they already bought it another thing is you can also often rent textbooks for like a 90 day period for my last piece of general advice this is very general but I really recommend going into college with a very flexible mindset. You should be like a sponge, you know? I feel like a lot of times when you are a senior in high school, you're at the top of the food chain or whatever, a lot of us have a little bit of an ego. Like we think we have things figured out. Everyone's super excited to go to college and start their new lives and the best four years of their lives. But don't underestimate how much your opinions, your life, your personality, and everything about you can change. And those next four years. In that way, I encourage you to head into college thinking about it more as an opportunity and a pathway for you to, I know this sounds cheesy, but really find yourself and develop and grow and change. Like just go into college with a growth mindset, not like a linear one of thinking I'm gonna get from point A to point B with my degree, with my academic, with my professional career. Because sure, some Sometimes it happens like that, but a lot of things can change when you're in college and you will definitely learn and grow the most when you are open to learning and trying new things. I know that was really vague, but I think it's something I definitely needed to hear going into college. I just don't think you should set up such regimented expectations for the next four years of your life when you don't exactly know what's ahead of you. So just be flexible with what happens and make the most out of all the opportunities you're given. Adding on to that, not downplay the other things you can gain from college aside from the college courses itself. I think there's so much growth that happens in college from you know moving out being away from your family you're in a different academic environment you're much more independent you just have a lot more control over your life you have control over who you talk to and who you're friends with I feel like that's a big difference from high school so do not downplay like those social differences that also leave a lot of room for growth because a lot of college is teaching you not textbook information a lot of it is teaching you how to network or or how to talk to professors or how to grow your leadership skills in clubs and stuff like that that's not exactly laid out for you like a class courses so if you feel like you're not learning anything in your classes you're going to college also to prove to future employers and other people with your degree that you are capable of going through all of the nuances that come with a college education not just passing the test on to social remember that friendships and friend groups can change and that is absolutely okay and perfectly normal most likely your freshman year will look a lot different from your senior year especially at my school they like hype freshman year up a lot and they like force you into a lot of social interaction and I feel like by the time you're a senior and you're in such a different mindset than you were when you were a little wee freshman you're in a totally different mindset you're looking for a job you're leaving college not entering it most of the time by senior year I feel like have your established friends and you know what you like and what you don't more than when you were a freshman don't be upset if your tight-knit friend group whoever you were like living with in your pre-assigned freshman dorm is not who you end 
college with because a lot of times things change, people change, people are figuring out who they like and what they like as much as you are. Next off, on a little sadder of a note, but do not be disappointed, do not be sad, do not think there's something wrong with you if you do not end off college with some tight-knit friend group that is like from a TV show. I just think everyone's experience is really different in college and a lot of times we go in with these expectations of you know what your social life should look like but also remember just like high school was just like middle school was just like your future will be college is just a period of your life and if it looks different for you than it did from other people or from what you expected or what the media makes it look like do not be hard on yourself Ooh, college is a place where you meet a lot of people who are really different than you listen and learn but also take this time to solidify your morals and who you want to be around said it's okay to be selective with friendship and know when you're forcing it too much because you become who you surround yourself with so that means you should be intentional with who you are spending your time with i've been on these spiels about how you know you're changing and you're growing in college and i feel like it's a very malleable time in your life because you are finding out what you like what you don't like who you want to be and all of that stuff. A, it's really important to hear both sides of the conversation and learn from people who are not like you, who don't think like you, who grew up in a different state or country from you. I think college is a great way to learn about different worldviews. Who you choose to be around will shape how you feel about things, how you see the world, and so on. So I just encourage you to be very intentional about who you choose as your close friends. I encourage you that it's okay to be selective, like of course be kind to everyone and be kind to people who have different views from you, but also just take this time to really reflect and be very introspective about what is important to you and how you feel about those things. Aligning with people who feel the same. I think that's how you really build the most fulfilling relationships and relationships that will last beyond the four years at school. And onto my last section, which is private university specific. Once again, this is kind of specific to Pepperdine, but also I think it would apply to a lot of other smaller private universities. First off, one of the biggest strengths of going to a private school and what you are paying sums of money for, the connections. It's the small classroom environment it is the one-on-one -on -one counseling from advisors it is the personal interactions with professors the close-knit community with a smaller campus like you are paying for all of these things so take advantage of them and use them because that's what you are paying for this means getting to know your professors it's so much easier to get to know your professor when you're in a classroom of 10 than when you're in a lecture hall of 200 and remember these people are extremely qualified and they have years of wisdom that they are excited to share with you. That's why they are a professor. At a school like Pepperdine, professors are more than willing to grab coffee with you, host dinners at their house, give you life or career advice, give you letters of rec for a post-grad degree, all of these things. So they're very welcoming of students who are also seeking this kind of relationship out. Also, don't be afraid to use the school services. If you're talking to the financial department of the school, you will have a lot easier time talking to them and trying to negotiate and have them hear you out at a smaller school than you would at a public school so don't be afraid to ask that's what they're there for there's a lot of services even like alumni services or job searching career center like services at our school and at a lot of schools so i mean this goes for all universities i just think you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one defined attention at smaller schools because that's what you're paying for and then lastly this kind of goes along with that pay attention to to the activities that your school hosts and provides for you. It's a great way to be involved in your school community. Our school puts on things like concerts or holiday festivals or film festivals and at least at Pepperdine, part of your tuition goes towards that so you might as well check it out and see if you like it. And then I also mentioned study abroad programs because that was a big reason I chose Pepperdine and it's a big part of Pepperdine culture. We have a very big and established study abroad broad program so I think participating in larger scale programs not just clubs and stuff is a really great way to broaden your experience at college and I highly encourage doing so. Of course the 
this depends on what college you're going to but i do know a lot of colleges have different abroad programs and also at different scales so you can find what fits best for you that is it for my little not so little college advice and reflection video this is everything i wish my freshman self knew hopefully this video helps you guys out and if i missed anything or if you guys had any or have maybe your current college student have any other thoughts on college i would love to hear what you guys have to say thank you guys so much for sticking with me through my entire college experience it's i get sappy thinking about it but stay tuned for a lot more to come on this channel i'm super excited for my post-college post-grad life and you guys know i will be documenting it here so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye guys